you know that God is, and you can fill in the blanks after that. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to one of the most exciting gospel shows, a gospel show that touches the heart and the minds of people, and it can change your life. I am Simone Malone, one of your most trusted and respected voices, and for those of you that are watching the video, hello to you. Happy Valentine's Week, and make sure you do something to celebrate the one that you love, but the greatest love you can have is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I promise you a wonderful, blessed program today. I am delighted to be able to spotlight this brother. I've had hundreds of people on my show over the years, but truly this testimony of faith and deliverance is going to encourage some brother, some sister out there, because this brother is making a difference in his music and his life. I want to welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls everywhere, pastors, evangelists, gospel musicians. I want to welcome Mr. Marcus Stanley to FMHDMS live from Richmond, Virginia. Good morning, my brother. How you doing? Good morning, sir. Grateful to be here. I am grateful to even have you because God has tremendously blessed your life and allowed you to be here on this earth. Am I right about it? You're right about that. Words can't express. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to say hello to everybody that can see me but hear your handsome voice live from Virginia. Go ahead and say hello. Good morning, everybody. God bless you. I'm so glad you woke up this morning. Absolutely. Well, well, Marcus, there, there's a lot I want to talk to you about, but I, before I even begin into the meat of this uh, exclusive interview, I want you to tell people who in the world, who in the world is this talented musician, humbled man of God from Richmond, Virginia? Well, Simone, I'm just a guy who's really been through some things in my life, just like everybody else out here. Um, and I've actually learned from those things. Those mm-hmm. things have truly been a demonstration of Romans eight twenty eight that all things work together for the good, even the bad, even the ugly, even the not so pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a musician. I was I was raised in a you know in a Christian household. Mm-hmm. Went through a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But all of those things that I experienced made me the man I, I am today. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and you growing up into a Christian household and, and being a talented musician from the age of 11, God bless you. You started playing the piano then? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. But you know, something happened during the time that you were growing up. Even though you had that talent to be able to play the piano, be that great young musician that everybody was talking about, saying, look at him play those keyboards. Yeah. You had some difficulty growing up, focusing where you, what, dropped out of school? Yeah. I uh, took out of school. Um, mm-hmm. I was actually it started off being dropped out, but then I got expelled from school. Mm. I had a I had a very rebellious age. Um, my mom and dad had a divorce when I was young, and mm. unfortunately, I did a lot of things to try to you know get my my dad's attention, and I did a, made a lot of dumb choices and mistakes, and kind of rebelled mm-hmm. on purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that I did also was I got kicked out of school just for you know starting a lot of trouble. I didn't have a problem with the school. It was mm-hmm. just that I was. I was searching for, you know, searching to fill that void in my heart mm-hmm. that I felt, and being so young and not being able to, you know, comprehend what was going on in my heart, it just, as a result, came out through my actions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was kicked out of school at the, at the age of 15, actually. Wow. So l- let me ask you this, Marcus, because, you know, I-, I like to get to the meat of things. What was going on in your life at that time that you can share to the world? Uh, that, you know, you dropped out of school because I taught high school and I was a high school teacher and I was yes. tough with my students and I always believed that they need to come to class to learn. So what was going oh, yeah. on? I, I can honestly say there was a, the absence of the presence of God in my life. Mm. It was really me just trying to do things on my own. And it doesn't matter if you're a child or adult. If you're trying to live this life on your own without God, that's when you'll have issues. It may not be getting kicked out of school. It might be, you know, getting fired from a job. Mm-hmm. It might be anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, that was the fruit that was coming forth from my actions. <laughs> it mm. was from me, you know, from me actually having that missing link of my dad. And instead of going to my heavenly father, <laughs> mm-hmm. I reached out to the world right. to try to fill those, to fill those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what happened during uh, high school that you decided to go back, maybe, or then after that, I know you furthered your education, but can you share well, what happened? Yeah, well, after that, after I got expelled from, from school, I actually went into this program called the Commonwealth Challenge, and this is a six-month program for four kids that have been 
kicked out of school, kind of mm-hmm. like a military style program. Okay. And I went to this program. I got refocused. Uh, I got even plugged back in with the church. Uh, got finished the program in six months. Stayed on and did an internship to help other young adults. So I was actually there for a whole year. Mm-hmm. And in this program, I got my mm-hmm. GED. You know, grad- officially graduated. Got a little class ring and everything. But it was just through a military school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Now, now, during the time that you were going back to get your education, were you still playing the piano or were you diverted with all the negativity that you were involved in that you just stopped playing the piano or you still I stopped playing? completely, actually. <laughs> I stopped for about a year. Yeah, it was about a year to change. I, was, I enrolled in co- classes. <clears throat> I went to community college and I was just pursuing a different avenue at that point. Wow. Wow. So during that time in school, you were having a lot of trouble, even though you came from a good family background. You was this rebellious young man, which a lot of young people are. And, yes. and, and you decided to get yourself back together again, because certainly God had his hands on your life. Am I right about it? Yes, absolutely. So after you, check, the program is actually what helped me get that discipline. OK, so that's the other side of it. You know, okay. it was God coming back into my life. But the other side is I needed some structure and discipline, which was after for my my life. Okay. My mom did a great job raising me, but not having a man, a father figure in the house mm. did affect me in certain ways. <laughs> mm. And you know what? You just said a key point because we need the whole village there to raise the family. And, and a lot of times, and to all of our young people that are listening in, when, when that village is broken, a lot of times it affects your development growing up as a young person. Yes. So so listen, you, you graduated, you got the GED, you went to that, that, that school and, and uh, you know, finally finished that. And then what happened after that? Tell us the story. Well, after that, uh, was, I was in Richmond. I moved back to Richmond. I was only home for about two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got discovered at a concert. I was playing keys, backing up someone uh, locally. And mm-hmm. I got discovered and got an opportunity to go on the road and start playing for four different gospel artists. Uh, mm-hmm. I played for Diane McClurkin and Damon Little at the time. Mm-hmm. And when I was out, so I actually turned my life back in a good direction, you know, mm-hmm. kind of restored myself. Uh, God restored me. I was focused. I was like, okay, this is what I want to do because definitely I got the break. Mm-hmm. But when I was on tour in 2004, that's when everything changed. Mm, tell us about and, it. Yeah, I was walking to the store. I had, a, I had a routine of doing that every night. I would walk to the store after our performances. And uh, I was in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm-hmm. And walking to the store to get some, some junk, some Gatorade, junk. stuff like that. <laughs> I would always okay. spend a lot of money on the road. <laughs> okay. Or unnecessary things. Okay. So I... I Grab me uh, some of these, you know, candies and stuff, walk from the hotel to the place. Mm-hmm. And I noticed these guys kind of staring at me, watching me. Mm. Uh, but I didn't pay them any mind. I just kept going, doing what I was doing. I actually left my wallet back in the room. Mm. And I went back and got it. So they saw me again, went to the store, got my stuff. On the way back, they confronted me. They like, literally set me up, came mm. out from the bushes. Um, about six of them surrounded me. And they pulled out a forty five caliber handgun. And they shot me. The guy shot me eight times. What? And he actually shot me once. I fell to the ground. He stood over top of me and shot me seven more times. You got to be kidding. No. <laughs> so it was it, eight times you were shot. Yes, sir. And you felt the first shot. At, at point blank range. I didn't technically feel the first shot because it was so happening so fast, but I felt everything after that. Okay, so so let me ask you: Did they rob you, or they? I know they shot you, and they wanted to leave you for dead. But God had another situation happen. Yeah. But but did they take your wallet? No, they didn't, and it's only it's only because of God protecting me. At the moment that I got shot, I saw an angel get in front of me. Wow. And the reason why I know it was not a figment of my imagination was because the angel. I, I had no time to think about anything being in front of me. If you can imagine, a gunshot is very quick. So by the time the gunshot came, I saw the angel in front of me. Look at and God. I saw the, the bullets going through the angel. Mm. So so God revealed himself to you when you were shot and you saw these angels? Yes. It okay. was actually one, one angel right in front of me. Right. Now, now, do yep. you do? You, can can you tell us what happened after that? Did did they run away? You don't know. I mean, were you you were kind of not, not conscious and not aware? No, but you No, know, I hit the ground pretty hard and hit my head when I was... You know, before I got the other seven shots that came in me after the first shot. And they actually joked and laughed because wow. what they were doing was they were initiating somebody into their gang. And that mm. person was given the task to shoot me. Oh my God. And they were laughing and joking. 
but I just, I, at that time, I felt the peace of God around me. Wow. And I knew I was alive, but at the same time, I knew that if I had shown any signs that I was alive, it would have really finished the job. Mm. Um, so I knew I was hanging on by a thread, but at that point, I didn't move. I just kind of stayed still and laid there, and they were picking up shell cases from the bullets and joking and laughing. And the whole block was clear, literally. Like, it was a, a block that was full of people that just went ghost immediately. No one was around. These guys shot you, really wanted to leave you for dead. They thought you were dead, but the angels protected you, pulled the blanket over you, and you survived. Yes. They, I tried to stop cars. I tried to, you know, get people to help me. There was cars where I could, when, it, when the person drove by me, there was multiple cars that drove by me, and I could literally see Mm. the look on their face and I could see I made eye contact with a lot of them but they still did not stop to help me got to be and I remember screaming at help wow. but I couldn't I couldn't my voice was gone kind of so it was kind of like a help you know yes, I was like yes. yelling but it wasn't coming out but mm -hmm. they saw me covered in blood dragging myself out the street because I would have got hit by a car that's where I got shot mm. and it was in the middle of the street and I had to drag myself I couldn't feel my legs mm. I, I tried to stand up and everything like that. that was, this was after they left. Mm -hmm. I had to play dead till they mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. Once they left, that's when I went into fight or flight mode, trying to you know trying to stop cars and everything. But nobody was there for me, except for God Himself. <laughs> wow. So so what happened at some point? You know, someone stopped or what? Well, at some point, I, I realized that I still had a cell phone in my pocket, what? and a lot of people that are familiar with Sprint know that they cut you off if you go over your spending limit. Uh -huh. uh, I just forgot to pay my bill that night, so I had no reason to have my phone. But thank God I did have my phone with me that gave me a direct line to get help. And wow. when I had that phone, I pulled it out, my whole hand was covered in blood, and I called the, the 911 emergencies. I told them where I was. I was laying next to a street sign, thank God, so I, could, so I knew what intersection I was at. Mm. And the lady sent help. She just said help is on the way. She tried to keep me on the phone, but... I started losing my breath in the conversation, and it got to a point where I couldn't talk anymore. You know, there's a song that says, God held me on, and God allowed this to happen to you for a reason. Do you believe it? I 100% believe that. I mean, you, you could have died right there, but this incident and situation that happened to you is a miracle. Yes. It's truly a miracle. Here you are. You were growing up. You came from a good family. You 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 straight away when you were in in high school and you got your life back together again. And then the enemy came to you to kill you, but God rescued you to show you that there's more for you to do for you to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Absolutely. You know the scripture says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will send up a standard against them. Mm. And I really believe that that standard was that angel. That standard was God's protection around me. He never puts more on us than we can bear. Mm. But when it's going on in the middle of it, of course we don't want to feel the pain. Of course we don't want to go through the storms. Mm -hmm. We don't want to feel the darkness and everything that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Because it was painful. I'm riding in the ambulance, oh and I just remember them saying he's not going to make it. Mm. I remember the police drawing crime scene tape around me as if I was just a body there, like I was about to die any second. Mm. And I remember what that felt like to be looking up at the ceiling, kind of like the way you see on the movies, and mm -hmm. see the lights, and mm -hmm. see the and have the flashes of your whole life. And dag, I should have did this, and I should have did that. Mm -hmm. I experienced every single one of those things. And when I got to that emergency room, finally arrived, I saw that same angel that got dispatched standing there covering me, as if like you're going to be okay, you're going to be fine. And that was the last thing I remember. I remember going under the an anesthesia before surgery. I remember waking up a day later and the nurse next to me with a chart. And she just was like, you made it. My God. And it was only because of God's grace. Yes. You're talking to somebody that has six major organs that are damaged now. I have no, no spleen at all, half a pancreas, no small intestine, half of my stomach is removed. My colon was reattached. Oh, my God. Uh, and my nerve damage in my right hand is gone. I can't even feel my right hand. Mm. But because of God's grace, <laughs> mm. I was able to overcome every single thing that should have stopped me. Mm. I couldn't even eat solid foods for a couple months. That's how bad it was. Mm. My internal damage was tremendous. So I had to, <laughs> whenever I was thirsty, they would give me like a little sponge mm -hmm. 
that I could like kind of wet my mouth with. And just and even that just made me think that's still nothing compared to what Jesus can do for us. Yes, yes. <laughs> think about that. He gave him a little thing with vinegar. <laughs> yeah. His mouth is, you know, we're sitting up there, I'm sitting up here complaining. It still has nothing to do with what Jesus can do on the cross for us. Mm. So, Marcus, how long did it take you to rehabilitate yourself, to get yourself back together again? This is one of the most incredible testimonies I have ever Fully, heard. fully it took about six months. But I was immediately back out doing things. I actually did a lot of recording um, in July, and I had just been shot at in, in April, and I had full full bandages on me. So I was still I went back out touring and everything, even though I was still recovering. Mm-hmm. I didn't fully recover till six months, but it took me at least a month and a half to walk again. Mm-hmm. And it was a step by step. I'm talking about they got a walker on the side of the bed, and you got to stand up. And that's your exercise for the day. You stood up today. Good job. Hand clap. That was mm. my progress. <laughs> mm. Then the next day, stand up and take three steps. Mm. Then the next day, let's make it to the door. Mm-hmm. And it just progressed from there. Mm-hmm. So it was a it was a long process. It was a very humbling process. It was times where I couldn't do anything for myself. Literally, people had to wash me, bathe me, change my stuff. Wow. My bandages was the only thing that I learned how to do my, on my own. I learned how to change my bandages while laying on my back with all the saline and gauze and actually changed the bandages. Mm. What? It was a long process, long process. I, I hear you, man. You are truly a miracle. You have blessed me and encouraged me today. What, what, what did you have to really say to God? I mean, I know you thanked him, but what did you really have to say to God for this? I just had to say, Lord, I can't thank you enough mm. for saving my life. Words can't express what you've done for me. Mm. But I thank you, Lord, for giving me another chance. Yeah. And the truth is, Simone, like no one's testimony is greater than another. There's so many things that try to take us out daily. I remember you, you even telling me about the cancer that mm-hmm. you faced that mm-hmm. you overcame three mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. There's so many things that attack us that we have no clue because we don't even see what God does for us behind the scenes. We don't see the black ice that could have went over. We don't see the drunk driver that could have killed us. Exactly. So there's no person. My testimony is no greater than anyone else's. Everybody has scars. I have scars from my bullet wounds and everything that happened to me, but every single person has scars of incidents that happened in their life. Mm -hmm. They might not be visible, but if you could see their scars, you would instantly start crying, Mm -hmm. and you would have tears in your eyes. The Mm -hmm. only difference in my scars is that they are physical scars. Yeah. But I told God, thank you, simply, Simone, because I couldn't, there's, 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 there's no words that you can even do. It's almost mm-hmm. like when you lose a loved one, there's nothing you can say to a person to take away the pain. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, when I tell God, thank you, there's nothing I can say that mm-hmm. will equal my thanks that I have for him. Even the Bible says 10,000 tongues wouldn't be enough. Yes. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I, hear I don't you. have enough thank yous to tell God. <laughs> I hear you. So so, so, so now you, you're rehabilitated, you see those scars there. And and the healing is still taking place. You you back to playing, you know, yep. very well. How how is it now to be able to play and still have the issues with your hand? Well, it, it was a process. Mm-hmm. It, it was very definitely a process, Simone, because that wasn't the end of my story. Mm-hmm. After I went through that horrible thing, I then got addicted to the painkillers that I was prescribed in the hospital. So. Mm-hmm. Even though God saved me and saved my life, here was here came another curveball from the enemy that I didn't even see coming. Wow. So I, they gave me, you know, pain medicines and morphine and all that stuff that you could think of to deal with the pain that I was feeling. Yeah. And that, in fact, all separated me from God to a certain degree. Mm. So I became numb. I became reliant on this. You know, I, I, I had to rely on these pain meds every day just to wake up. So oh. I went through a horrible addiction trying to get myself free from it. I went to, you know, I went to uh, treatment centers around the world, some in Florida, some in California, uh, very nice places. Did NAAA, I did all that stuff that you see people do to try to get off and try to be not addicted to a substance. It wasn't until I finally surrendered and came to the lowest point of my life that I said, God, I need you to take full control. I don't want to live my life like this anymore. I need you to take the wheel. I need you to grab me. I need you to rescue me. I surrender. Once I did that, everything changed in my life. Mm-hmm. I went into a one-year Christian rehabilitation <clears throat> program called New Life for Youth, and my life completely turned in a different direction. 
not <laughs> just the testimony of me being saved from the bullets, but the testimony of God delivering me, because who the son, son sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. God set me free from the bondage of addiction mm -hmm. and added something else on my belt to be able to help and save and impact others. Wow. That is amazing. So you went through all of this, became addicted to the pain medication, went for treatment at different places. So, so you were an addict to pain. <laughs> Straight up. And, and nobody knew how to help me because they knew, everybody knew what I went through. Mm. So if they saw anything negative or saw anything that looked suspicious, everyone overlooked it because they knew I got shot eight times. They knew I'd been through hell. They knew I had experienced a lot in my life. So no one came and reached out to help me at all during this time. <laughs> So, so my question to you is, all of this that happened, my God, what do you want to say to the people of God that are watching and listening to this station across the country? I just want every single person to know how real God is. I want them to know that you don't have to have something extraordinary or phenomenal happen in your life. The fact that you woke up this morning is, is proof enough that you still have a purpose and God still has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we get, sometimes we get a little bit used to and comfortable thinking that we're supposed to wake up in the morning. The alarm clock didn't do it. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of thousands of people around the world that did not wake up this morning, but God chose to give us life. And we're supposed to live that life more abundantly. We're supposed to live it to the fullest. He gives us that order mm -hmm. that we're supposed to do that. So no matter what happens, we have to stand on God's word and know that I don't care what happens. No weapon point against us shall prosper. We, any attack that comes, we can survive with the strength of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. I can do all things through yes. Christ, not some things, all things. It's not we get to admit to pick and choose. It's not a buffet line. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. wants us to be the servant with everything we have and follow mm -hmm. him, not just on Sunday, not just mm -hmm. when we're having a bad time. And mm -hmm. I, I'm guilty of it. I've prayed and said, God, help me you know, when I'm in, a, in trouble, when I'm back against the corner. But we're supposed to cry out to him every morning, mm -hmm. every day, all day. Pray all day. Mm -hmm. I walk around praying through the day mm -hmm. because I can't get enough of him. Mm -hmm. I'm like a little, I'm like a battery that needs to be recharged 24-7. I don't mm -hmm. walk around on 100%. Mm -hmm. So I would just tell every, all of your listeners to put God first because you don't know when your last day on this earth will be. Mm -hmm. And it's important for us to take this life that, we get, that he's given us seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to take it as if this is our last day, we need to serve him with everything we have because we're not taking any of this stuff with you. You're not taking your 401k. You're not taking money. You're not taking your cell phone. Nothing's going with us mm -hmm. but our salvation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm spending a little extra more time with you. Give, give me a few more minutes with you. When, when, after all of this and, you know, you re instill, you know, rehabilitation because I, I feel that you're always in recovery for your life from a situation like this. I want to flip the page here in the book. I want to talk a little bit about your mental status because I work in mental health. I'm a forensic therapist in mental health. I deal with people with problems. Oftentimes when a situation like this, Marcus, happens, people deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. I want you to talk a little bit about what was going on. Even though God gives you peace in the midst of the storm, I understand all that, but let's talk, you know, man to man here that, that we go through something uh, mentally when something like this happens. H have you yeah. experienced any of that? Yes, I've, I've experienced it. I can't blame everything on the drugs because there was a mental thing that happened with me as well. Mm -hmm. This terrible you know, situation I went through being shot, it did bring a lot of anxiety to me. It did mm -hmm. bring a lot of depression that I had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the clinical world, there are some people that actually need medication Mm -hmm. So what they have experienced has literally knocked off the chemical imbalances in, inside of their brain. Mm -hmm. So I'm not all about, I'm not about saying that you know if if you're having an issue mentally that you don't need medications and medications aren't the answer. Medications mixed with God's help are the answer. If God if that's God's will for your life, that's the route that you need to do. I know plenty of pastors that are on you know, certain antidepressants and everything mm. because of the chemical imbalance in their brain. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they still believe in God for their healing. Yes, yes. And yes. me personally, I didn't, I wasn't on a medication per se, but I did get put on temporary things to try to help me go to sleep, to try okay. to help me do this, to try to help me wake up. Okay. And until I finally got in desperation, I realized that if I was plot, if I rely on a substance to do anything, then I'm probably not going to be free from the bondage of addiction. Wow. So I dealt with that. I would be standing in line and somebody taps me on the shoulder and I have a flashback of the mm. student 
You know, mm-hmm. I, I still to this day I still have issues where people mm-hmm. come up behind me. Mm-hmm. I might be startled for a mm-hmm. second, but mm-hmm. I've learned to control it and give it to God where it doesn't consume me. But it's yeah. still there. It never has gone away. I still have those issues, but it's just the more that I grow closer to Christ, the more He gives me the tools and equips me to be able to handle these things when they do happen. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So now let, let, let's turn real quick. What is going on with you musically? You're playing for a church. You're playing for different artists. You have such a tremendous gift. Go ahead and share that. Uh, right now, uh, I, I actually, when I went through the program, the Christian program, the recovery program, I stayed and I actually pursued helping other people that had drug and alcohol addictions. Mm-hmm. Um, I was the induction coordinator for the program. I actually brought in people that had all types of addictions and issues and life control and issues. So that was the main thing that I was doing for the next four years mm-hmm. after uh, after the guy set me free. In the middle of that, I was also doing my music at the same time. I produced an album called An Instrument of Praise. Mm-hmm. And what that is is a 76-minute album that I recorded in one take. And it was actually me just in the studio thanking God for what he did in my life. And it was a, a collection of hymns that I played back-to-back in mm. one in one setting. Um, God really blessed that album. He allowed that album to go uh, completely around the world. I pushed it independently. Um, it got over 7,000 sales, thank God. Yes. And so many people were blessed buy this album because they could use it to study, they could use it to pray, mm-hmm. they could use it to, uh, you know, worship. And that was the main thing that I did musically during the first three years after being set free. Yeah. Fast forward to today, you know, I minister music at a, a church in Richmond called New Life Outreach Church. Okay. Um, that is my full-time job. And at the same time, I also travel and speak to different um, conferences. I, I travel and do mission work overseas. Help in different communities, just all with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. People need to know that this story made you know national news about what what has happened to you and and many people. I've watched some of your videos, and you have touched a lot of people. and And God is going to continue to use you as that inspirational voice, that pianist and motivational speaker and youth advocate to let people know through your testimony. People are going to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. Um, mm-hmm. This is my, my whole testimony is nothing without God. Yeah. Who I am is nothing without God. Awesome. Because anybody can sing, anybody can play instruments, but the thing that makes me different, sets me apart, is my testimony. And the thing that sets apart every single person in this world is their testimony. Mm-hmm. There's nothing fantastic or amazing about me playing the piano. What is amazing is what God did through my life. That's correct. What God allows me to do, that the fact that I can even play and mm-hmm. not have feeling in my right hand is insane. Wow. Every time I'm sitting down playing, I'm thanking God, and it doesn't make sense that I'm able to still have this gift to touch people. Mm. And yeah, I can't do all the fancy stuff. I can't do all the complex things that I used to do. But the presence of the Lord is what's leading me now and not my flesh. Yes. So that's what allows my gift to be able to break chains and touch people's hearts in ways that I can never imagine. Yeah. Because I just wanted to be a good musician back then. But now, I just want to be a good man of God. And that's you. the whole point. I want to be an instrument of praise. That's why my album is called an Instrument of Praise. I want to be, I said, God, use me as an instrument, not just what I play. What I play doesn't matter. Use my heart as an instrument for your glory. Use my mind as an instrument for your glory. Use everything that I went through, the terrible things that would make any person put their head down in shame. Let me walk in a room with my head up Mm -hmm. because I'm proud of the Most High. I'm proud of the Lord for saving my life. I'm grateful for Him saving my life. Incredible. What do you want to say in conclusion, my brother? I just basically want to uh, say, we we talked a few days ago, Simone, about you shared uh, how something I put up about God's love. Yeah. I just shared, I had a transparent moment where I was just in tears and I shared how God's love yeah. is bigger than any, any situation that you can encounter. And I just want to share that with everyone to embrace God's love, mm-hmm. embrace the people that love you, embrace your family, embrace your friends while they're here. I dealt with a death in the family this last weekend, and, mm-hmm. and again, God continues to show me how precious our life is. Mm-hmm. We could be here one second and literally everything can change in one moment. It's important for us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Christ, mm-hmm. and not put it off till later, not wait till later. We need to do God now. And my cry to everyone that's listening is that if you have some reservations in your heart, if you haven't accepted Jesus, 
is you need to take that time to accept him in your heart. You need to get plugged into a church. You need to develop this more and know that once you accept Jesus into your heart and once you commit to the Lord, the enemy will will still attack you. It's not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through some things, but God is going to get you out of those things, and He's going to grow. He's going to grow you through those things that you experience. The thing about storms in your life is that they also run out of rain eventually. No matter what's happening, the sun is coming, the shine is coming, <laughs> the light is coming, and just be encouraged and never give up on your path or where you're headed. Marcus Stanley, how can I say thank you for joining me today? You have been a blessing to this program. You've been a blessing to so many people that are listening. Your testimony of faith and deliverance has encouraged me even the further, and I'm sure that it's encouraged others. The last thing that I'm going to let you go, you want to say hello to anybody special. This is your time. Go ahead. I just wanted to say hello to my fiance, April. And I just thank God for her heart and her life and uh, for supporting me through this time. And my mother and my family who have supported and stood by me, even when I was lost, yeah. broken, when I was addicted, when I was a, a walking piece of trash, they still stepped, stayed beside me and encouraged me because they saw what I could be. My best friend, Marguerite, saw who I could be in Christ, and she believed in me all the way to the point of her death. And I thank God for even sending us angels. Everybody has one, that mm -hmm. angel that God sent yes. to protect them in the season of their life. Wow. Well, again, I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Marcus Stanley from Richmond, Virginia. Marcus, I want you to know that life awards you appropriately for what you give and say to others. God bless you, man. I thank you for joining me. And uh, hopefully we're going to connect when I come down that way. I told you I have relatives in that area. I will be headed down south uh, this spring and summer. We must meet. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely, Simone. I love you, man. I thank you for your life and your ministry and your heartbeat. I'm thank so you so grateful much. that God kept you and made you a cancer survivor and elevated you to such a degree where Absolutely. your life is a witness for others as well. Absolutely. Let me just say this, and I promise you, you're going after this. This is my show, my station. I can take this time. That the, <laughs> prophet, the prophet said, and I want to encourage you with this, that the Lord has downloaded messages to us last year. Some of us ignored the messages. The prophet said to me on January the 1st that, Simone, you never ignored the messages it's time to install them. But he said to me that I'm going to get an upgrade. And I'm going to say to you that God, you I feel like running. <laughs> God is about to upgrade you for right. what you have been through. So you be encouraged. Keep on doing what you're doing. You are blessing the body of Christ. And again, I thank you. And this broadcast, you will hear again tomorrow and see the live video. Say goodbye to thank everybody you, on the video. Thank you so much, man. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Okay.